do it all. Oh, you ready? <sighs> yeah, I guess. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Benning Farm. We got a tad bit of a problem with some cabbage worms. So we're going to show you how to take care of them. We hope it'll work. It should work. It's supposed to work. It's what everybody always says. worked. Yeah, Debbie says it always works, so this time it won't work. But uh, we're having a problem in this part of the country right now with army worms eating up hay fields. So far, ours has not had any army worms in it, but ours is mostly Bahia, and they seem to be going after the coastal. So, uh, cabbage worms, army worms. And we have a few of those in there, too, I've seen. So. Yeah, there's some few army worms in there, so we're going to try to knock it out, so we'll get it all mixed up, tell you what it is, and get started, because we're burning daylight. Okay, I'm going to show you our damage right quick. Um, as you can see, the red brush and kale is not supposed to look like that. It's got some pretty heavy damage on it. We've got some over here that's not too bad. But I want to show you this leaf right here. See all them black spots on there? All that? That is worm poop. And that's not the good worm poop. That's not the kind you want in your garden at all. And they have pretty well decimated the leaves on this. The plant will come back. It's not dead because kale grows you're around. Yeah, there's some worms right there. Those are cabbage worms. They like brassicas. And as you can see, they kind of like to go in gangs. So, we've got damage on our greens down through there. They've gotten on the beach some, which most of these are ready to pull and have been pulled. Down here on our greens. Oh, they're doing something there. Oh, the ants are eating the worms there. Ants may be another organic solution, but I really don't want ants in here, so I think I'll go my other way. But when they get done, they'll make like a cocoon and hatch out. That's a spider. I don't see any. But they are little moths. You see little white moths flying around, Little, just little small white moths. They're not the cuties you think they are. That's what they lay, and that's what the result is. But you can see down here, some more red brush and kale, and then we had some spinach mustard tender greens that they got, and then in our bok choy over there. And so we're going to see if we can get rid of them. Okay, what we're going to use to get rid of these, it is a uh, BT, this is Worm and Caterpillar Killer. Uh, this is an organic treatment that you want to use for the worms and all, and what it does is they eat the leaves that sprayed with it. You don't necessarily have to spray it on them, but when they eat it, it messes their stomach up and they stop eating and then they die. And so... Um, you can, it's got the little safety thing on the back with the directions all. And you can use this up to the day of harvest. Just be sure and wash your stuff real good. But you do that anyway whenever you're doing your produce. But what we're going to do, it says here to, um, it says mix 1.5 fluid ounces per 3 gallons water. Which we have a 1 gallon sprayer right here. And so it's 1 tablespoon per gallon for a hand sprayer. So, we're going to do that. Um, them are actually kind of, um, a type of cabbage worm. There's several different kinds. But this works on all worms and caterpillars and stuff. It don't smell so good either. But we're going to put a tablespoon in here. Eddie already got it filled up with water for me. So we're going to put a tablespoon in here. <coughs> a 
and that's what it looks like. But just one tablespoon per gallon. So as you can see, this bottle here is a pint. There's a lot of tablespoons in a pint, so this will last you a good while. Does the, does the bottle have a shelf life or how long is it good for? You got to handle it any special way? Uh, I just keep mine in a cabinet in the house. Um, it didn't really say to have a use by date. I've kept it before up to like two or three years and it still worked. Okay. Start spraying. And I just spray all the leaves and get them. Kind of hit the undersides if you can. spray all your greens whether they've got damage or not because if they move to those you want to make sure you get all of them. Okay you want to be sure and spray the leaves all that you can and all the plants whether they've got damage or not because you want to get all of them because they may move on you and go to safer grounds and you don't want them to have a safer grounds if you can help it. You really want to spray heavy on the ones that you do see the damage on. I don't know if they'll eat cilantro or not, but I found an army worm in with the cilantro this morning that I smushed. So I'm going to just hit it and make sure, and I'll probably hit my deal. these outside edges. They about got that one there, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, but the plants will come back, which the bok choy, just as I was getting ready to come harvest it, is when they started because it was ready to be picked and it's starting to go to seed, but anyway. And I'm going to spray my radishes too. As you see, they've got damage also. And I've seen some of these on the radishes too. Uh, BT only targets caterpillars, mm -hmm. so you don't have to worry about killing your honeybees or anything. No. And BT, what it does, um, 
or what it is, it's a naturally occurring organism that is in your soil. So it's, when they take it and, you can get it in a powder and dust them. But when I went hunting, I had to hunt for a while because I guess everybody's using it because of the army worms and all. And so I finally found this and all they had was the liquid. See, they've pretty much cleaned up all this discharge here. I'm going to go ahead and spray in here because sometimes they hide in the empty barrels. Because I have found the army worms in here. They done ate everything and they're stuck in the barrels. Okay, that's it. Okay, this will be a little bonus for you. As you can see, this is uh, more of a barrels we use. We have potatoes in it. Harvested um, May or June. Apparently, we missed one. So it started growing out the bottom. It's probably a small one. And I may not miss it. It may just been so small I said to heck with it. But anyway, it started growing out the bottom. This potato vine has grown that much. So, the point I want to make here is you read the books and everything, and you know, you got to have this soil and that amendment and all that. The thing is, plants don't read the books and they'll do stuff like this. So don't be afraid to try to grow something. It may not grow, and it's going to do what it wants to on its own. But don't be afraid of trying something, because it's kind of fascinating what plants will do. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, any suggestions, ideas, leave them in the comments. And we'll get to you and answer all the questions that we're able to. Um, we thank you for hanging out with us. And be sure and like this video. Uh, share it with your friends. Because right now is when these things are hitting hot and heavy. So you need to try and stay ahead of them. And as you can see, we got busy and they got ahead of us. So we're trying to play catch up. So be sure and share it. Subscribe to our channel. And we hope to see you again.